Okay, we're gonna start with jumping jacks. And punches. Keep your hands up, keep your feet moving. skaters. Knees. Make sure when you do this that your weight is on your standing foot and the knee, standing knee is bent. Other side. touch jacks. So you start here and you jump your feet out and instead of bringing your hands up, you're going to squat down and touch the opposite toe. You're not doing this. Okay, you're bending the knees. That's where the work is. Front side back. Okay, that was the first time through. I need you to pause the video and go through that two more times. So the sequence is jumping jacks, punches, skaters, knees, touch jacks, and kicks. So two more times through the set, 30 seconds each, each drill. Okay, so now you should be back and we will stretch, reach up. And I'm not just putting my hands up, but I'm reaching up, trying to push my hands toward the ceiling and then down, back flat, trying to reach my hands, chin is up, hands straight in front of me as far as they'll go. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee, chin is up, laptop here. Other side. Take your feet, cross one in front of the other, chin up, reach your chest towards your knees. And then up, switch feet, chin up, chest towards your knees. Have a seat, feet out, keep both butt cheeks on the floor. Reach over, grab your toes with the hand on the same side, and then reach over the top. Other side. And then to the center, when you come to the center, make sure your toes stay up and your chin stays up. Reach your elbows toward the floor. Pull your 
feet in together. Reach. Well, the goal is at least to get your toes and take your heels up off the floor. But if you can reach out past your toes, that's good. Keep your chin up so it's not here, but you're here. Pull your feet in. Put the bottoms of your feet together. Keep your back straight. Okay, some of you guys, don't, don't ever grab your toes when you do this. You want to grab your ankles. And when I grab my ankles, it tends to round my back. If you can grab your ankles and keep your back perfectly straight, that's great. Otherwise, put your hands here to force your back straight and push, press your knees down. Feet together, or feet on the floor, almost together. Come to the squat, and then put your hands on the floor, and straighten out your legs. Head up. Okay, arms over and under. Nice and slow. No higher than your shoulders. And you're going to grab one and pull it across. When you pull it across, don't put your shoulder up here in your neck. Pull it down and across. And grab that elbow and push your hand back down so it's ideally between your shoulder blades. Then the other one, pull it across. Push it back. Then lace your fingers together. Pull your hands up as high as they'll go. Then reach over and pull them over the top. And up. Okay, so we're gonna do three exercises. I'm gonna show you each one, explain exactly how to do it, and then I want you to do one minute of each of them. So for the first one, you need two somethings that you can put on the floor. I'm actually gonna angle this down because I'm doing this on the floor and you'll be able to see better. Okay, so you need two somethings that you can put on the floor. I'm gonna put my cups here. Okay, now when I do this, I'm sitting up, I'm not leaning here. That's much easier. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, so your feet are here and you're picking them up over the cuffs. Hands are not here. You're here. It's your, your core muscles and your hip flexors that are doing the work here. Okay, that's the first one. <clears throat> the second one, you sit here and you point your fingers towards your toes, not back. Okay, ideally, you've got your palms flat. Mine, if I put my palms flat, straighten out my elbows, it leaves me here because they don't bend. If you have that same problem that I do, come up on your, on your fingertips and come up on your knuckles if you need to. So I'm here and I'm in tabletop, my back is flat. Okay, this is not the exercise. The exercise is bending your elbows. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick one foot up. It's not up here, it's not way down here. It's still, I can't pick both hands up and show you, but my quads are still lined up together. So I'm here, and this one is just coming to even with this one. And I do dips on one side, and I switch, and I do dips on the other side. And the very last one, your body's gonna be laying flat with your hands here. Okay, I'm never gonna put my head all the way down on the floor. Head's always gonna stay up a little bit. Hands don't go behind you, because if they come behind you, they pull you up and you're using momentum to get up instead of core strength. So you're here, and you're gonna sit all the way up, and then reach out and grab your toes, and up, and back down. So you're getting here a core drill and a little bit of stretch. Make sure you're sitting straight up, fingers are up, before you lay back. Never get your shoulders and your head on the floor. Straight up, out. Okay, so those three sets of exercises. That was um, feet over, the dips with one leg up, and um, the laying straight sit-ups. One minute of each of those exercises. Okay, this is the third week of Accuracy and Fitness Month.
So for, we're going to work on hook kicks and we're focusing the start on accuracy. So I'm going to start with a side kick chamber. As I start my chamber, my standing toes are facing there. When I turn my hips and my butt, we talked about this last week with the side kicks. When I turn my, my butt and my heel towards the target, I'm also going to turn the toes of my standing foot away from the target. Then I'm going to throw the side kick and I'm going to keep my, my knee straight and I'm going to hook my hip. So this is the hook. A lot of people think that that's the hook and it's not, it's the re-chamber. So I throw a side kick, I hook, and then I re-chamber. Um, in Tung Shido, the side kick is called Yup Chaki and the hook kick is called Yup Hurio Chaki, which technically means side hook kick. So you got to throw your side kick first and then hook. Now you don't want a huge hook, okay? So if my target is here, I'm not going to throw my side kick there and drag it way across. I'm going to hit here, assume I missed, and only drag back a few inches. Okay, so we're going to do 10 of those. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're going to do ten on the other side. And what I'd really like you to do when you do these is either do them in front of a mirror or videotape yourself doing them so you can go back and look later. I want you to focus on knee up turn the hip and butt towards the target, turn the standing toes away from the target, throw the kick, hook, and back in. So I want you to do 210 on that side too. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna get the props for the next drill. Okay, you did 10 on the other side too, right? Okay, so now you gotta get something you can set on the floor to do suicides. So I'm going to set mine. I'm using pot holders because that's what's in my kitchen and I can't get very far in my suicides or I'm going to crash into the camera. It's better if you have a really huge living room you can do these in or if you can do them in the garage if the car's out or outside. But suicide, run, touch the first one, run back. Touch the second one, run back. Touch the third one, run back. Touch the last one, run back. Ideally, they would be further apart than that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to run, you're going to touch the first one, stand up, and do five hook kicks. Two, three, four, five. Okay, on every one of your, your tokens all the way down the floor. Okay, we're going to do all of our forms now. I'm working on accuracy and stances. I'm gonna crank this down a little bit so you can see my feet better. If we're working on stances, you need to be able to see mine. Okay, so we're starting with basic form one. Basic form one, um, basic form two, they have the same stance through the whole form, which gives you, but you're coming at it from different places. Sometimes you're coming at it from a quarter turn, sometimes from a half a turn, sometimes from a three quarter turn. And every time you do, you need to come to a stance that's as wide as it is long, all your toes facing forward, hips and shoulders squared in front. What well, two things that tend to happen is one is people take the back leg and they turn the toes out and that skews your hips and your shoulders off center too. Or they make their stance too narrow, which again tends to skew the back foot off because most people are not flexible enough to do this at any distance and get the back heel on the floor. So the two problems with that is that it skews you sideways and with a narrow stance you're not really balanced um, you're not anchored to the floor. Okay, so we're going to start with basic form one. One, two, one, two. Okay, look at your feet. One, two, three, four. If you haven't yet, check your feet. Make sure your stance is wide enough and all your toes are forward. Three quarter turn always starts with your right foot forward, left foot always moves. You always turn counterclockwise. One, Okay, this was a place, a place where people tend to lose the width of their stance. Check it, make sure it's wide enough. Two, one, two, 
One, two, three, four. Three quarter turn, right foot's forward, left foot moves. Make sure when you get there that your stance is wide, all your toes are facing to the side. Two, one, two. Okay, so that's for AK red belts and tungsteno white belts. Okay, so we already did basic form one. Now we're gonna do the rest of the forms. We're focusing on stances since we're working on accuracy this month. Um, I want you to do your form and the ones below it at least three times each. So if you're like a red belt, you're gonna do basic form one three times, you're gonna do chill sign ill row three times, you're gonna do Nayanchi Shogun three times. Every time, I want you focusing on your stances. Ideally, you do this in front of the mirror or you videotape yourself doing it so that you can see the stances. So we're gonna start with chill sign ill row, one. Okay, jungle chassis. I have to rotate my hips away, but I have to make sure I'm still in jungle chassis here. Two. Same on the other side. One. Okay, look at your feet. Make sure you're in a nice wide stance. Two. One. Okay, this is jungle chassis. Make sure it's nice and wide. Two. This is horse stance. It's a, it's a subo work chassis, so it's toes out horse stance. Three. Four. Okay, I'm back up so you can see my feet. One. Okay, I'm in a cat stance here. So when I do the cat stance, if there was a line drawn from my heel out, this whole foot would be down the line. So I was here. One. Two. Triple chassis. Look at your feet. Make sure they're wide. One. Two. Get back up or I'm not going to kick you. Towards the back now, one. Make sure you're in triple chassis, two. Now when you put your foot back down from the kick, make sure that you land in triple chassis. People have a tendency to kick and then drop their feet narrow. You still need to be in a wide stance. And then last one going down, um, left hand stays on the chest as a check, pull in and kick. Punch, punch. Look at your feet. Make sure you're in jungle chassis. Look. Three quarter turn. Cat stance, low block. Look at your cat stance. Make sure that your feet are in line, your heels are in line, and your chest and shoulders are facing here, not skewed off to the corner. Two, jungle chassis. Throw high punch. One, two. And then Nianchi Shodan. Start here, this way. What you really need to focus on with your Nianchis is keeping your, you don't want your butt here, you want your butt tucked, you want your shoulders back, and you want your hips and shoulders square to the front. A lot of people end up here. So I'm here, I step back out, I am in Kima Chasi, toes in horse stance. Most of my rotation is coming only above my hips. Keep my knees bent so my head doesn't go up and down. Okay, look at your feet here. Make sure your toes are still pointed in. Check your toes, make sure they're in. Now you just hit that guy on the right so that your right foot comes in. Okay, and Don's, um, Gian. Um, we're gonna finish it up. The stances, I, there's a lot less indexing that I would like in this form, but the stances, once you get to the end point of each stance, you should still be able to look at your feet and see the same things. It's mostly um, rear leaning stances, which is both heels on the same line, hips and shoulders square to the front, or chingle chassis, which you've been hearing me talk about all through this video. So we start here. One, two, three, four, five, one, Two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four. Can you back up so you can see my feet? I'm coming here without an index to a rear meaning stance. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to come through a crane stance to a rear leaning stance. One, two, one, two, one, two. Basai Chasi, front stance. Three, front stance. Four, high block, check chamber. As my foot comes through, front stance as I hit the temple. I do a three quarter turn. Center block, two triple chassis. One, two. Same thing in the other direction. One, two. I'm going to go back. Low block. One. Now the next three chambers are here. This hand is going to chamber here so it can do a hammer to the side of the neck, and the other hand is chambered here to cover your body and come here. So the chamber looks like this. Um, I'll do that phrase for you go in the other direction afterwards. So I come here, one, two, three, four. Then I am going to take my right hand, chalk, as I do a three-quarter turn, shuffle in that direction, elbow, hammer. Then I'm going to come back this way. Left hand is going to come across as I start to shuffle. Right arm is going to elbow and hammer. Okay, that phrase coming forward is jingle chassis low block and then three chambers here. One, two, three. Fortunately, most of us are right handed. The right side ones are much easier to do. And there's two of those. With cross wrist grab Cobra. He's going to grab my wrist. I will trap, step back, and then step back in directly in front of it. Want to have a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. And I am going to rotate his fingers over towards his face. I'm not just pushing down, but I'm rotating. Okay, I can also do that. Trap, pull back, step in. And this is called Cobra knife hand. My hand is straight. This knuckle is driving into the side of his wrist. This is Ashinagi. Some of you may call it bat wing or chicken wing, but it's actually called shiinagi. He's going to throw a punch. I'm going to step out of the way. Block, carry, trap the thumb blade in his hand. Break the elbow. That If I don't break his elbow, there's no way he's going to let me do that with his arm. So I'm going to break his elbow. Then this arm is just going to go straight and follow so that we're here. We need to be shoulder to shoulder. I can throw him from here. But if I throw him from here in class, I'm going to dislocate his shoulder, and I would prefer not to do that to my Uki. So we're going to come here, shoulder blade to shoulder blade. This hand is not involved. It's just a balance break right here, and then I'm going to go. His knee take down from the ground. And it's meant to break the knee of your attacker. However, if you're practicing somebody, and you put your foot on their knee, and they lose their balance, they're going to have surgically damaged knees. So we're going to do it with a fake knee instead. So he's going to knock me down. I am going to do a back break ball. Then he's going to walk towards me. I'm going to pretend that's the knee. I am going to hook one ankle behind his ankle and put my other foot on his knee. And just like I did with the Sotagari, I'm going to push and pull. Okay. And had that been with his knee, I would have broken his knee and he would have fallen down. But this way, he lives to do it again another day. Okay, okay. so we're going to have the person offer you their right hand. I'm going to take my left hand and grab the whole thumb blade of his hand. I'm not just grabbing the thumb, I'm grabbing the whole blade. And then I put my right hand across the other blade of his hand. I'm going to bring it up against my body, so I'm using my body for leverage. And I'm going to rotate my right shoulder towards my left and down. He tries to get away from this by pulling straight back. Okay, so I am going to step inside, take my bicep, my right bicep, put it under his elbow, 
reach over with my right hand, grab the pinky side of his hand again, tuck it against my body and rotate his pinky away. This is called inside cradle arm bar straight for obvious reasons. He tries to get away from this by bending his elbow. I go with it. Okay, this is inside cradle arm bar bent. If I have his elbow out here, I don't have any control. I have to have his elbow tucked inside. Fingers are here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push my hand down and lift my bicep. From here, I'm gonna come back out to wrist lock one. I'm gonna take my hand and swing it up and over. So from my left side across to my right, bring it back up, grab his pinky blade with my right hand, put my thumb right below his knuckles, and then with my other hand, put my other thumb right below his knuckles. I am gonna bring it towards my body, push his fingers towards his elbow, and pull his wrist towards me. Okay, that's wrist lock number two. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna go to outside cradle arm bar straight. If your hands are big enough, you can grab their whole hand. Otherwise, just take these two fingers, step to the outside with your, right, your left elbow, cradle their arm, reach across, grab the thumb. His arm is straight, and I'm gonna rotate his thumb over and across. He tries to get away from this by bending his elbow. I come with him, so I have a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. This is called inside cradle arm bar bent. It's also called wrist lock number three. It's also called Cobra. Then I'm gonna step back out here. I've still got his small fingers in my right hand. I'm gonna take my left hand, grab the thumb blade again, let go of my right hand. I'm gonna step in, bring his fingers to the inside of my wrist. Come up tuck his elbow inside mine, between my elbow and my chest. If I'm out here, oh, I'm gonna hurt his fingers, but I'm not gonna have control of anything else. Tucked in here, and I put the other hand on top and I squish. This is called gooseneck. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna free up my right hand, grab his two big fingers. I'm not releasing the pressure on this hand. Using this bone as a fulcrum, I'm gonna pull his fingers over. Once I've got that, I can release the other hand and grab the other set of fingers. I wanna get a good grip on the fingers, pull them in and split them, step out. I'm gonna put his elbow on top of my shoulder. I'm gonna pull his fingers back towards me, split them and pull the hand down so I'm stressing his shoulder. Now, I'm going to keep his small fingers. I'm not gonna let them go. I'm gonna let go the big fingers, turn my hand over this way so that my thumb side is down and my pinky's up and re-grab those same fingers. Then I'm gonna step out. Now I can release his small fingers and I'm gonna re-grab them the same way so both of my thumbs are up. I'm gonna pull his wrist and his body towards me as I push his fingers back towards his head. And then I'm gonna let go of his small fingers. I'm gonna bring his elbow in. So what I'm gonna do is I gotta come directly in front of him I'm gonna tuck his elbow inside of mine. If it's not tucked in, I don't have control. I gotta tuck his elbow in. So I want a 90 degree angle in his elbow and as close to 90 as I can get in his wrist. And I'm pulling his fingers back. That's elbow in. Then I'm gonna go elbow up. I'm gonna turn the same thing here. And ideally, he's not any taller than me so I can do this. I can keep my elbow on top of his. You might need to go here. Don't resist the urge to go there. Okay, so I'm here, I still have a 90 degree angle and a 90 degree angle and I'm pulling his fingers up towards his bicep. Then I'm going to go elbow down. This is the most confusing transition in the whole set. I'm still hanging onto his big fingers with my right hand. My left hand is gonna come up, inside his shoulder, push his elbow down. Pull his elbow up against my chest, but below my ribs, not up here, because if I bring it up here, he's gonna come up and take my, thro my throat. So I want it below my ribs. Hand's gonna come in, grab my own wrist. Then I'm gonna turn my finger over here and pull down. And then this transition, you have no control in this transition. I'm gonna turn it over, put both of my hands on top, tuck his elbow back into my armpit and squeeze here. That's the whole series. Thank you, sir. Okay.
Okay, chucks. We're gonna start with single chuck. There is not a required chuck form, but there are required chuck techniques. So this form is just a way to tie all those techniques together. It gives you something interesting to do with them and it's a way to remember them. So if you're doing single chuck, you start here, courtesy, bring it out, block to your right shoulder, turn to the corner, two times down and up, two sets of triangles. Catch, reach across underneath, Bring it to your left shoulder on the back up so I don't hit the ceiling fan. Two down and up. Two sets of triangles. Catch underneath. Bring it back to your right shoulder. Let go of the bottom hand. Four figure eights and catch. One, two, three, four, catch. Left foot steps forward. Left hand does a high block. Punch. Remember we talked about this. The punch is this way, not this way. I'm going to do front kick, pump front kick, low block. Okay, then you have two choices. You can either do one helicopter here, or you can just go from your hip over to the top, back to the same hip, bring it back to your right shoulder, to right hip, right shoulder back to that corner. Same thing again, two times down and up, two sets of triangles. Reach under, catch, bring it to the other side, two sets of down and up, two triangles, reach under, catch, bring it back to the right, four figure eights, catch, Courtesy. So Tong Sudo, beginners, that is what you guys are doing. Okay, AK red belts, you need to know that. Tong Sudo advanced, green belts and single stripe, uh, three stripe brown belts, this is what you're doing. Um, red belt kids, you need to know this. Tong Sudo higher rank than this, you need to practice this. So we start here, courtesy. We step out with our right foot, turn to the right corner. Chucks come up, two sets down and up, two sets of triangles. Turn to the left, same thing, two down and up, two sets of triangles. Turn to the front, four figure eights, catch, high block punch, front kick, pump front kick, low block. Now if you're going to do the helicopter, you have the same option here. If you're going to do the helicopter, you're only doing it with the right hand, and it comes left hip, right hip, and both hands come to your shoulder. If you're going to do the over the head spin, you come here. You bring both hands to your right hip over your head. They both come to the left hip. The right one comes to the right hip and they both come to your shoulders. We turn back to the right corner. Two down and up again. If you can offset them, do that. Two sets of triangles. Turn to the other side, same thing. Two sets of triangles. Back to the front, either four figure eights or a chase for four counts. Catch and courtesy. Okay, so um, red belt karate kids and tongue sudo advanced. So two and one short round red belts and apprentices. This is your um, weapon for this cycle. Black belts, you should know this. We're doing the action cry form eight part of comma set. So we start here. One. Two. We're thinking about stances, so make sure that you're in a chimble chassis facing that way, so that when you turn, you're in a nice white chimble chassis facing forward. If you have your feet like this, then when you turn, you're not going to be in a front stance or chimble chassis. So kick, reach hammer, step back. Front stance there, turn to the front, front stance here. One, two, this isn't going to fit. Index in, back, punch, punch. Yep. Two, three, make sure you turn your standing foot when you do the side kick. One, axe kick. Actually, one is cross feet. Two is axe, spin axe kick. So left leg is kicking, target's there. So the chamber has to come up here so that your kick faces the target. Next month, we will put all the pieces together. And black belts, all black belts, Tung Sudo black belts and AK black belts, Chris Colombo comma form. Okay, we're not gonna quite finish it. Next week is strike test, we'll finish it the week after that. We start here, one, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in that direction. I turn this way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm, my feet are doing like chin big. Hands come up and out. So I was here, one, two. My right foot's gonna step forward. Left foot back and unwind. Three, block. Four, seven cut, strike. Five, what you're supposed to be doing here is a split kick and as you do, you're going to do a double downward strike with your commas. I can't do that. If you can do that, that's really cool. Please send me a video of it. The rest of us are going to do our seven cut and our strike and a side kick. Either, either case, you're going to end up in this stance, in the left stance. Then you're going to do a spin hook kick, landing all the way back. Then you are going to do a tornado kick. So right foot, rest to the kick, keep turning, double punch to the back. Okay, I'm going to turn it to this corner so you can see. I'm in a left jingle chassis. I'm going to shuffle forward in that left jingle chassis. Seven cut, seven cut. And then I'm going to step forward with the right foot and do that 45 degree downward cut. So after I did my hurricane kick, I ended up here. So one, two. And we'll finish that up next. Uh, first week after, after strike test.